Well, as you're aware, a motor takes electrical energy and converts it into mechanical energy. And a generator does the exact opposite. A generator converts mechanical energy into electrical energy. And it does so uh, according to Faraday's law. So in this diagram, you see the north and south pole of a bar magnet. And then I'm going to imagine what happens when we take this loop and put it in between the poles of the magnet. So you can see the diagram shows us the direction of the magnetic field, right? Field lines are going to go from north into south. And so we see that field line labeled as B. And then we also see the area vector in this diagram. The area vector points downward. So the angle between the magnetic field and the area vector at this instant is 90 degrees. So initially, the magnetic flux at this moment is equal to zero. <clears throat> but there's a handle on the axle of this generator. And as you grab and crank that around, and let's say, for example, you start to rotate in a clockwise direction. Then next thing you know, this loop is going to move into a different orientation. So as it rotates clockwise, um, a quarter turn later, the loop is going to be sitting like this. And now its area vector will have rotated clockwise 90 degrees and point to the left. But the magnetic field doesn't change, right? The North Pole and the South Pole are still aligned the same way. So we have an angle in between the area vector and the magnetic field of 180 degrees. So now the magnitude of the flux, although it's negative because the, the angle is 180 degrees, the magnitude of the flux is a maximum value. And then it's going to rotate another 90 degrees. So it'll be back in this kind of arrangement. And so now the area vector has flipped a full 180 from the initial position. The magnetic field still points to the right. The angle's back to 90 degrees, and we're back to the case where the magnetic flux is equal to zero. And this goes on and on and on. So the flux is continuously changing, not because the magnitude of the area changes and not because the uh, strength of the field changes. The only change in flux is due to a change in the angle between the magnetic field and the area vector. So let's express Faraday's law and see if we can derive an equation to help us come up with some way of calculating exactly what the output voltage would be. So let me clean this diagram up once more. Put the loop back in the magnetic field. And we'll start with Faraday's law. The induced voltage is equal to negative the rate of change of magnetic flux. Okay. Well, magnetic flux is the dot product of area and magnetic field. So step two, we substitute in place of uh, flux the vector dot product of B and A. Actually, let's just continue working to the right here. That's negative ddt of ba cosine theta. The magnetic field is constant. The area has a constant magnitude. It's the angle that changes. So when we take the derivative, we can ignore b and a and treat those as constants. And so in step three, we have the induced voltage is equal to negative b a times d d t of cosine theta. Let's look at our diagram again. We're <clears throat> given that the rotation is at a constant angular speed or angular velocity. So if that's a constant value, uh, what's the relationship between omega and theta? Well, isn't omega just equal to d theta dt? Or if it's constant, 
is equal to theta over t. So theta is equal to omega times t. There we go. Let's make that substitution. So we've got the EMF is negative BA times DDT cosine omega t. All right. So what's the derivative of cosine? It's negative sine, right? So we have EMF equals negative BA, and then we have to apply the chain rule here. So negative BA times negative omega sine omega t. So the output voltage, if we cancel the two negative signs, is equal to omega B A sine omega T. Now what's that tell us? Without a doubt, the stronger the magnetic field, as magnetic field strength goes up, we should expect to get a greater voltage out of our generator. So the generators that give us the greatest output are the ones that have the strongest magnets built into their design. And also, <clears throat> as the area goes up, so does the induced voltage, right? And that makes sense, too. If you have a larger um, loop, then you should get a greater output. And then as omega goes up, the voltage goes up. So that just means the faster you spin it, the more output. So to get the, um, a generator with the greatest overall output, we want a strong magnetic field a large area for our loop of wire and we want to spin it very quickly. And then one more thing, you can increase the effect. See our diagram had just one single loop being cranked around by this handle, but what if you took the wire and looped it around and then around again and again and again and again and again? Then you have n number of windings and for each winding it just um, multiplies the overall effect by that number. So, in the end, we can say that the output voltage is equal to N times omega BA sine omega T. What if we were to graph that? What would that look like? In other words, how does the voltage being put out by the generator vary with time? Well, all of these are constants. They don't have to be, but we're going to assume we spin it at a steady rate, and that's pretty typical. So if the n and omega and b and a are all constants in this equation, then the only thing we're really doing is producing a graph of sine, and our output voltage then looks like this. Well, the electricity we get in our homes comes from a design something like this. In a nuclear power plant, uh, the atom splits, and then that um, boils water. The heat that you get from that reaction um, is used to boil water, and the boiling water produces steam. The steam is at high pressure. It comes out, and it jets, and it uses that uh, form of mechanical energy to spin a coil of wire in the presence of some magnets so that we can get electrical energy. And then the electrical energy is fed through a network of power lines from the power plant, ultimately to our homes. And then that energy uh, must be related to the original form here. The energy was being produced by large generators, big turbines in the power plant, and the output voltage is... AC, which is very different than the output voltage you get from a battery, right? If we graph a battery's voltage versus time, it's just steady until the battery dies. And then what happens? Once the battery dies, it quickly drops off to zero. So uh, there's a difference between AC and DC. Eventually, we'll learn how a transformer can be used to modify AC signals, and you can't really transform DC electricity, but that comes at the end of this unit. For now, at least we have an expression for the voltage you get out of a generator.